From the studios of Books in Motion in Spokane, Washington, this is Gene Engany reading The Deadly Promise, a Wolf Calder Western by Will C. Nutt. We'll begin with Chapter 1. Wolf Calder reined in his black and let his gaze sweep over the lush grasslands that opened up before him. He'd just come through a pass, and was looking down now at a broad valley with a wide creek snaking through the center of it, willows lining the bank. The entire valley floor was a sea of grass, the fragrant wind rippling it like water. And far below, barely visible from where Wolf sat his horse, at a point where the creek took a wide, lazy meander. A small nest of cabins and corrals had been set in amongst a stand of cottonwood. Profoundly relieved to be quitting the parched and dry land behind him, Wolf urged his black on down the slope toward the distant cluster of buildings. Soon he was riding through grass that reached to his stirrups, the pungent odor of sage clouding his senses. When he was close enough, he was able to see a thin tracery of wood smoke lifting from the chimney of the largest log house. Fine. That would mean coffee, at least. A brook feeding into the creek crossed his path, and he pulled his black up gently and eased him into the soft mud around it. The shot came as the horse stepped carefully down into the brook's channel. As Wolf heard the slug whistle past his left ear, he quickly spurred the black up the far bank, fell forward over the horse's neck, then slid sideways to the ground. Rolling quickly over as soon as he struck, he pulled his single-action cold out of its well-oiled, flapless holster. The black pulled up about ten yards further along, then glanced back at Wolf, whickering questioningly. Wolf smiled grimly, deepening the scar that ran from his patched right eye all the way to his ear. He was a lean, ugly man at first glance, and he lay perfectly still in the tall grass, waiting. A horse galloped up from the direction of the buildings. Not until the rider was almost on him could Wolf get a good look at the rider. He was an old man, his face covered with a white stubble. The two saw each other at about the same time. Wolf rose quickly to his feet, his colt sighted on the man's head. The old fellow's rifle remained in its scabbard as he flung both hands into the air. His horse pulled up quickly. All right, mister, the old man said. You got to drop on me. What's the idea? You all as great strangers that way? No, it wasn't my idea. I got a nervous grandson back there. He's just a kid, but his father taught him to shoot afore he taught him manners. A kid? Seems like someone ought to take a belt to him. If you ain't willing, maybe I am. The old man put his hands down and grinned. Now, mister, that would suit me just fine. Wolf holstered his gun and started for his horse. We'll ride in together, old man. I'll be right anxious to get to that chore. But I'd appreciate a cup of coffee first, if it's on. It will be, the old man said, pulling his horse around. Wolf swung into his saddle and followed the other man. He was dressed poorly with faded and patched Levi's, a woolen shirt open at the neck, and a battered Stetson that had carried too much water and seen too many hot suns. 